Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be that excited to do a sponsored phone unboxing, but the Red Magic 9 Pro is the first device that I've gotten my hands on with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And this thing looks sick. Qualcomm is claiming up to 30% better performance, up to 20% better efficiency, a 25% faster GPU, not to mention that Red Magic's implementation comes with virginity armor. Wow, I'm never gonna lose it this way. Anime's cool, no judgment. Seriously though, Red Magic is claiming that this is the fastest chip to ever do it, and the phone itself is loaded up with features. First, let's take a look at the accessory package. We've got an included Type-C to Type-C USB cable, as well as, wow, imagine that, a charger in the box. And not just any charger. This is an 80 watt charger that we found took the phone from zero to full in just 40 minutes, which is all the more impressive when you, wow, this paper is not coming off. There we go. <laughs> It's glossy black, which is all the more impressive when you consider that the phone itself has a 6,500 milliamp hour battery. But oh wow, I thought this was a sticker, but it's not. Between phones with cool lighting and ones with transparent backs like this, I am liking this trend. Why have a boring black slab when you can have a cool black slab? Oh, there's another colorway they sent us. Let's guess. Snowfall. Oh, okay, white. Hey, that's not just white though. That's, that looks pretty cool and also includes armor anything in here some removal tool and documentation cool we're looking at a 50 megapixel another 50 and that is not a camera that is a cooling fan which we'll take a look at in a moment the third one is a two megapixel shooter right here which it's gonna be a macro shooter maybe i don't know they don't mention it so we'll figure that out first let's get this thing fired up and talk about why it matters that these cameras are flush i think most people are kind of used to the camera bump at this point so why do they care and the answer is because while it doesn't matter for holding your phone like this, it matters a lot for holding your phone like this. And these are gaming forward phones. So if you got a camera bump digging into your knuckle and you're sitting there using it for two, three, four hours at a time, it's gonna be pretty annoying. Comes with a built-in screen protector. Always love to see it. Thank you for not nickel and diming me. Let's talk basic specs for a moment. It's running Red Magic OS 9, which is based on Android 14, and has either 12 or 16 gigs of LPDDR5X memory with 256 or 512 gigs of storage. Did I mention that that fan is RGB? Oh my God, it's got four separate LEDs, it looks like. Let's crack open Mobile Forge. Ah, here we go. Competitive atmosphere LED. Whoa, okay, there's an LED here. Let's make that one purple. Nice. They say it spins at up to 22,000 RPM, which might be kind of annoying if you don't have headphones in. Uh, the good news is, why don't we take a quick tour of the outside of the device? You got your dual SIM slots, dual nano SIM, USB-C, stereo side firing speaker. There's your game mode toggle. Ooh, haptic trigger buttons, lock button, volume rocker. These have a 520 hertz polling rate and feature custom lighting. Then moving up to the top, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, let's go. Another side firing speaker, oh, there's one of your microphones and another vent for the fan. So this is pulling air in the one side and blasting it out the other. This must do some real cooling in here. And it does, we've got results for it. Firing up 3D Mark, whoa. You can immediately hear the fan kick in a lot less annoying than I thought it was gonna be. Of course, it's probably not running at full speed right now. Let's do a wildlife extreme stress test. We already ran this, but I'm just experiencing it for myself for the first time. Man, it's crazy what you can do on a mobile chipset these days. Is that as loud as it gets? Okay. Well, that's not bad, especially when you consider. Here, let's have a look at our historic results. This is the worst we got it to do. This is in its stock configuration without either of the clip-on coolers. And over a 20 minute stress test, we only reached about 60 degrees by the end of it. And that is some really strong result stability too at around just shy of 94% of the score after 20 minutes of what we had on our first loop. What that means essentially is if you start at 30 frames per second, you're gonna end up at around 28.6 frames per second after a 20 minute gaming session. That's pretty good. Now I mentioned some clip-on accessories, huh? Here's the clamp-on one. You got a little button to turn it on, a USB-C port for power. Oh, I guess uh, 
it doesn't have its own battery, so you gotta power it with the phone. Here we go, one sec. And it's a little weird to me that you would have an insulating rubberized layer. I mean, I guess you don't want it to move around, but no! It's thermoconductive silicone. Wow, that definitely increases the weight a little bit. Oh, I bet it comes with a little short cable. No, it comes with a long cable. Overall, things have been going really well up until now. How about a shorter USB-C cable with the clip on? Whoa, that RGB though. Okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's something. The button is apparently not to power it on and off. It just goes. It's to change the gear. So it can either go in high gear or eco mode. And then if you hold it, it changes the RGB style. Speaking of cooling, their ICE 13.0 Magic Cooling System apparently features a 10,182 millimeter squared vapor chamber, which is a lot less than it sounds like. That's only 100 square centimeters, which is 10 by 10, but that's still a lot of surface area to pack into all the little structures inside their vapor chamber. With this bad boy, we were able to achieve 96.3% frame rate stability, which is not as good as the magnetic one. That's, wait a second, does this have a Peltier in it? Oh, that's chilly. Interesting, as a first party accessory, all right, sure. Oh, cool, I don't have to have a big stupid clamp on it. The SOC is kind of up here, so let's go ahead and, ooh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I got this. Ah, no! D-Brand be watching this like, yeah, Linus, this is why we never let you put on our skins. Okay. I probably wouldn't put it there, even if that does give me the best performance, and it really does. We saw greater than 99% performance stability with this particular cooler on it. Coming back to game space, there's a lot to explore here. They've got different performance profiles, depending on whether you prioritize battery life or performance. They've optimized their plugin library. They had crosshair, stopwatches, cool stuff like that. And they've revamped Mora. She's their AI digital assistant. And maybe this is the kind of thing that plays better in other markets. That's probably enough of Mora for me. My wife watches these. <laughs> she doesn't. But. Look, the people who are into Mora, you guys, you know, you saw that, you're like, oh, that looks great, and you got, you guys go for it, but I, it's, uh... Let's talk about the display. <laughs> uh, Red Magic claims a better peak brightness than they ever have before, and that much is true, but we were not able to attain the 1,600 nits that they claim. We're not quite sure how they measured that. We were able to hit just over 1,100 nits, which is plenty for watching content in HDR, but isn't what they said, so we'd like to see that improved. What was what they said was the battery life. We measured over 23 hours in our endurance test, playing back a YouTube video at a fixed brightness and about an hour 45 under extreme load. Pretty darn impressive. I like the aspect ratio. It's 2480 by 1116. So it's a little bit on the taller side. Really responsive. 960 Hertz polling rate on the screen. You can really feel it. That's not bad, hey? Not bad. Distortion sets in around 80%. That's as high as I would go, but this thing is flipping loud at 80%. Get you some real stink eye on the bus loud at 80%. So don't do that. Just use the headphone jack. There's more to like about the screen. I didn't even mention it. 6.8 inches, 120 Hertz AMOLED, but where's the camera hole punch? That's right, my friends. They are boasting a 93.7% screen to body ratio with an underscreen front-facing camera, and there it is. Huh, that's pretty good. There, no, no, we got it, we got it, we got it. There, you can kinda see a shadow of it. That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's see how it holds up. Yeah, that is uh, not the best selfie camera I've ever used. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of processing on this boy to make it work. But if you are not that into selfies, which a lot of people aren't, and you prioritize a completely seamless screen experience, this is it. And it's there in case of a selfie emergency, I guess. And this has a particular impact for gamers because hole punch cameras tend to not have touch sensitivity over top of them, meaning sometimes you can have to rearrange your inputs. Not gonna be a problem here. At least the rear camera is markedly better. Very functional. This is the first phone that has made us go, man, 
we need to reevaluate our mobile game benchmarking because most mobile apps are FPS locked, so they can't go higher than whatever their target is, 60, 120 FPS. Dolphin used to be just like an insane stress test for phones, but this thing hit 1% lows of 58 frames per second. Like we're not gonna be able to differentiate between Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 devices, or at least barely. What are we gonna do? Yuzu. Oh, well that's gonna be hard. We've got one more accessory to play around with. The Shadow Blade 2. It's got Hall Effect sticks and triggers, which I was not expecting. Actually, surprisingly nice ergonomics. Different joysticks, depending on whether you like them small or you like them grippy or... Okay, that's pretty cool. Joystick swaps are handled by just popping off these magnetic tops. It's apparently compatible not only with Red Magic phones, but basically any phone you like, as long as it's got USB-C. And, oh, it turns your USB-C jack into a USB-C charging port and a headphone jack. That was immediately detected, love to see it. Oh man, PlayStation Portal, look out. As long as you've got like $800 to spend for the top skew. Although to their credit, at least pricing hasn't gone up since last gen, which seems to be something we can't really take for granted anymore these days. And it starts at 650 for the 12 gig, uh, 256 gig version. Mm, it's not compatible with the extra cooler with the gamepad on though. Let's fire up Dolphin. Man, I like this thing. It feels surprisingly good. Rip at the back, L4R4. Even the D-pad doesn't suck. I'm not the biggest fan of the position of it, but it doesn't suck. All right. Ho oh, ho. How do I use items? All right, that'll do it. It's not a skill issue. It's, it's a settings issue. Superstar hacks, let's go. Well, that was the end of the race. Okay, well, let's uh, ignore that and uh, subscribe to Short Circuit. See you later.